Shalom to all the participants of the Connections Convention. My name is Mira Chovav. I'm the rabbi in Kehillat Ramot Shalom in Be'er Sheva. It's been a few tough days for us in Israel and specifically in, in areas like Be'er Sheva in the southern areas of the state of Israel. But we keep ourselves going uh, with all those things that uh, that keep us strong and keep us together, like worship and study and working with our Bnei Nunot Mitzvah. Uh, during this Kabbalat Shabbat service, in a few hours, we will be singing the last words of Psalm 29, right before singing Lech Adodi. Uh, those words say, Adonai oz l'amo yiten, Adonai yivarech et amo v'shalom. May God grant courage to God's people, may God bless God's people with shalom, with peace. So from Be'er Sheva, we wish you all not just Shabbat Shalom, but Shabbat Shel Shalom, a Shabbat of peace, a Shabbat of Shalom, and we all hope for better days. They thought. Thank you, Rabbi Mira Chovab, for those important words. As you will see, this evening's service is a blend of pre-recorded and live material. In light of the current situation in Israel and Gaza, we have decided not to change the pre-recorded parts of the service, but throughout our live sections, we will be sharing messages and prayers of solidarity. bienvenidos, bienvenidos. Welcome to the World Union Connections Kabbalat Shabbat for the Americas. I am Rabbi Tati Shagas, and it's a great honor and privilege to be one of your live hosts this evening. The World Union is the international network of reform, liberal, progressive and reconstructionist movements, serving 1.2 million members worldwide in more than 12,050 congregations in over 50 countries. 1.2 million members, that's a big number, a lot of people, and yet you have heard many of our leaders call it the World Union family. Is it possible to feel like family when you speak about such a large number of members? The answer, and how? The answer to the first question is yes. Doing exactly what we have been doing, not only these last couple of days, but over a hundred years. Connecting, learning together, building community, caring about and for each other. In last week's Parsha, when Moses is asked to do a census of Bnei Israel, the expression that the Torah uses is not the verb to count in any of its many Hebrew forms, but suet rosh koledat Bnei Israel, elevate the head of all of the community of the children of Israel. One by one, elevate their head, look at them, see them. In Jewish tradition, when we have a census, when we count our people, it is not just the final number that counts, it's each and every individual. The World Union serves 1.2 million individuals, one by one, Jews from 50 countries, cultures, languages, 1.2 million members, each of them with their own story. Take a moment, a deep breath, to leafnim, to internalize it. It's not just an idea, it's a reality. It's the World Union's mission and it happens every day around the world. I know it because I'm a proud member of the World Union and it has played a central role in my life. I grew up as, and was educated in what used to be the only reform congregation in Argentina. I am a graduate of NETS for our Zionist Youth Movement and of Tamar, our International Young Adult Forum. Before making Aliyah, I worked at the Arlene Fern Reform Jewish Day School in Buenos Aires and at Fundación Judaica, both funded by Rabbi Sergio Bergman. Soon after I arrived to Israel, I worked at the World Union headquarters for Netzer and Tamar, and I was proud to bring Reform Zionist education to youth and young adults in Latin America, Spain, and Italy. I also became a member of Keilat Kodan in Jerusalem. Don't take me wrong. This is not about me. It is about the world union and every one of each of you. We are a family 
in which there is a place for each of us when you want to be a part of it. Family is not easy. It takes work, commitment. Family shares not only a common history, it shares a destiny, its future. Facing our future, Jewish future together is the motto and open invitation for you to be an active, committed member of this family. Join us in prayer. Be a part of the world union. Let's enjoy this Kabbalat Shabbat for all the Americas. Shabbat Shalom. light we rejoice 
So now let us listen with all of our hearts to hear God's voice. Oh, 
Congregations, the community rises to their feet at the last line of Lacharodi and faces the open door to welcome the Shabbat bride. This is a custom going back to the time of the Arizal when the Kabbalists used to walk out into the fields to welcome the Shabbat. Before coronavirus, I have been blessed to be able to sit in so many different communities around the World Union for Progressive Judaism, and there's always that moment when I wonder, are they going to stand? Will they face the door? What if there are several doors? And then will they turn and face the ark? Will they face east? And in Europe and America, the synagogues generally face east, and in South Africa, they face north. Which direction should I face? What if the surface is being held outdoors? If you think those are complicated, once our services moved online, which way to bow? Well, eventually I decided that during the Chadodi, I would bow towards the camera of the computer because of the window that had opened to the community around Cape Town and around the world that was welcoming Shabbat together. This was the way that Shabbat would enter. And this Shabbat, as these windows open across the globe, and across the time zones of this World Union for Progressive Judaism. May we celebrate, all of us, the entering of Shabbat together. Bo'i chala, bo'i chala, enter, O Bride, enter, O Bride.
Shabbat Shalom. My name is Rabbi Maurice Harris, and I am joining you from just outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the United States, and I work for Reconstructing Judaism. I want to mention that you can find the Sidur linked below the screen if you are looking for that. It's my great privilege to be able to join with you this Shabbat in the call to prayer the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai Ha-mevorach, ha-mevorach, le-olam v'ha-ed. Ha-mevorach, ha-mevorach, le-olam v'ha-ed. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach, Le'olam Ba'en. Baruch Ata Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bidbaro Ma'ariv Aravim, Bechokma Potech Sharim, ובתמונה משנה עטים, ומחליף את הספנים, ומסדר את הכוכבים, ומשמרותיהם ברקיע כרצונו. קורא יום ולילה, כולל אור מפני חושך, וחושך מפני אור. הוא מעביר יום ומביא לילה, הוא מבדיל בין יום ובין לילה, אדוני צבאות שמו, אל חי וקיים. תמיד ימלוך עלינו לעולם בעת. ברוך אתה אדוני, אמר יברבי. שבת שלום. Uh, I'm Rabbi Julie Sachs Toller. I'm here in Berkeley, California, which is on the West Coast or the Pacific Coast of the United States. It is such an honor to be here with people from all over our world. We continue uh, with Ahavat Lam. Ahavat Olam, always translated as everlasting love, has something questionable inside it. It, on the one hand, it's everlasting love, and on the other, near the end of the prayer, we ask that God not remove from us this love. So what does it mean that it's everlasting, and yet we're asking that it not be removed from us? Uh, and the question is answered by Rabbi David Cohen, who says that even something that we know we always have that will never go away, it's still appropriate to pray for it or to reach for it, especially if what we're talking about is love. So with this prayer, we reach for the love that is everlasting. But I think tonight we ought to translate Ahavat Olam not only as everlasting love, but also as Ahavat Olam or Olami, worldwide love, the love that connects us to each other in all the places that we, from which we are praying tonight. So please join me in Ahavat Olam. And I will go straight from there into a melody for the Shema, which you may not know. I'll sing it without words a couple of times. It's very simple. And then I will use that melody for the Shema. Ahavat Olam. Ahavat Olam, Beit Yisrael, Amcha Ahavta. Torah u mitzvot, chukim u mishpatim, otanu li madeta. Al ken Adonai Eloheinu, v'shochveinu u'vekumeinu, nasiach v'chukecha, v'nismach b'divrei Torah 
ובמצוותיך לעולם ועד. כי הם חיינו באורך ימינו, באורך ימינו, ובהם נגה יומם ולילה, יומם ולילה. באהבתך אל תסיר ממנו לעולמים, ברוך אתה אדוני, אוהב עמו ישראל. Join me. Shema Yisrael, Ya Eloheinu, Ya Echad. Baruch Shem Kevod, Malchut Ha'od. לעולם. וכשאתה <אז> והיו לו תותפות בין עיניך וכתפתם. על מזוזות ביתך ובישריך. למה אנטיסקרו ועשיתם את כל מצוותי? והייתם קדושים לאלוהיכם, אני אדוני אלוהיכם. אשר הוציתי אתכם מארץ מצרים, להיות להם לאלוהים. אני אדוני אלוהיכם. אני אדוני אלוהיכם. אמת. Mikamocha is recited right before the Amidah and it declares that God is like no other being and we praise God for having saved our people during the Exodus and we sing Mikamocha, the song that Israelites sang with lots of joy and happiness when they were crossing the Red Sea. And the prayer of Mikamocha is talks also about the future, what we are expecting to see in this promise that what we are expecting um, to see with a time and we do want to see that everyone will be redeemed and that everyone will live in peace, in joy and in happiness, that we will all be free and rescued um, by God. And also I wanted to point that I think it's very, very important and especially when we're talking about joyful and, and, and such beautiful hymns as 
mikamocha is that we need to define the kavanah and keva. Because when we pray, we usually want to have this experience of that uh, moment and we want that it will be meaningful and personal and we want to be in that moment. But sometimes when we pray, we say words and we think that, oh, we said those words, it means that God heard us. The Hebrew word means the fixed words of prayer, but also we can allow ourselves to have this moment of joy and kivun, the direction exactly as we are having uh, in Mikamocha. And Maimonides is the 12th century rabbi, and he was a very famous scholar and physician. He wrote that prayer without this intention is no prayer at all. So let's enjoy and, and declare this faithfulness in God when we recite Mikamocha. Let us contemplate uh, before we restart the Amidah prayer. Just in a few moments, uh, we will recite the second blessing, Gvurot, where we will all say, Morid Hatal, causing the dew to fall, as if we were all living in the land of Israel. Prayer creates a virtual reality of Jerusalem and land of Israel. I would like to recite the teaching of Mishnah Brachot. While praying, one must face toward the direction of the holy temple. One who was riding on a donkey should dismount and pray calmly. If he is unable to dismount, he should turn his face toward the direction of the temple. If he is unable to turn his face, it is sufficient that he focus his heart opposite the holy of holies. Similarly, one who was traveling in a ship and is unable to turn and face in the direction of Jerusalem, should focus his heart, her heart opposite the Holy of Holies. Just as a famous saying tells us, whenever I go, I go to Jerusalem. <laughs> Shabbat <laughs> Shabbat, and the Shabbat, and the 
acceptable to you. Oh, my rock, my rock, and my redeemer. And the Eternal spoke to Moses, saying, Take the sum of the sons of Gershon also by their ancestral houses, by their families, from 30 years and up until 50 years old, shall you number them. Listening to the opening words of our Parsha, I can't help hearing echoes of what is happening in our world today. Take note of those who are eligible for a vaccine. From 60 years and up, from 50 years and up, from 40 years and up, those with comorbidities, those who work in the field of medicine, those who live in the developed world, those whose governments can afford to give them vaccines, who are organized enough to distribute them, effectively and take the sum of those lives lost in the pandemic, those no longer with us. There are lots of numbers that we could list if we started listing numbers. How many days of lockdown? How many online services? How long since our community has gathered together under our roof how long since we've seen our loved ones in person and not on a screen? Over the past year and a half, the world has transformed around us and the Jewish landscape has shifted right under our feet. Our definitions of community and sacred space and being together have all been challenged and changed. And out of necessity, adversity and crisis, we have once again stretched and redefined and adapted Jewish practice to meet current realities, even as they continue to change day by day. And while some of our communities are not yet able to contemplate coming back together physically, others are starting to return to shul, even as we continue to gather online. Hybrid worship and re-entry plans are the conversations of the day. This is an incredible moment in time. Let's just take stock for a moment. This service, this conference, progressive Jews from all over the world worshiping together in an online space that we have made sacred by coming together within it to worship, a few years ago, we would not have even imagined such a thing, let alone celebrated it. And now we are becoming experts. It takes a lot of planning, effort, and energy, time, and consideration to make this new format of worship successful. And yet we've proven that it can be done. We've learned how to make prayer meaningful, engaging, and full of ruach, even while we are in separate physical spaces. We've figured out how to bring Shabbat online. We've redefined Shamor and Zahor, and truly, despite the terrible circumstances that led us to it, I believe that we are better for it. As a progressive Jewish community, we are suddenly so much closer to one another than ever before. We're visiting virtually in one another's shuls, zooming in to give divrei Torah and shirim, to co-officiate at life cycle events. We can suddenly attend services all over the world, learning from each other with each visit, sharing our videos, and through them our incredible musicians, teachers, cultures, and customs with one another. It's now possible to spend Arab Shabbat in Moscow and Shabbat morning in Brazil. Families who haven't been physically together in over a year can still spend Shabbat together each week. It is actually 
if you think about it, a miracle. In Parshat Naso, we're reminded of how the different tribes are assigned avodah, tasks related to the service and servicing of the Mishkan. One tribe is responsible for the curtains and the coverings, another for the rods and pillars. This group carries the utensils and implements. This group carries the brass rings and the fittings. Each and every time the Israelites move from one camp to another, the whole structure of sacred worship and ritual is taken down, carried to a new home and reassembled. And what we've done during this pandemic is much the same. We have disassembled and reassembled our spiritual structures with each person, each community doing their part by innovating, by reimagining, by studying halakha and figuring out how to apply it, by sharing, by inviting others in, or by simply showing up. We have each taken a piece of what is sacred to us and carried it through the wilderness and set it back up in new and unimagined locations, keeping always at the forefront what is most important being together, being Jewish together, making meaning together, advocating for a better world together, worshiping together, sharing Shabbat together. The psalmist wrote, Ze hayom asa Adonai nagila v'nismachavo. This is the day that God has made. Let us exult, let us rejoice here online across oceans and borders and time zones and language barriers and cultural differences, and yet somehow still miraculously together. Progressive Judaism is thriving around the world, stronger and more vibrant and more united than ever. And I don't know about you, but I'm, inspired. And while I can't wait to be back on the bima with the voices of my congregation around me, I pray that we don't lose the incredible connections that we have forged with one another throughout this difficult and incredible time. Kim Hiratzon. Shabbat Shalom from London, from Finchley Progressive Synagogue. I'm Rabbi Rebecca Berg, and this is Dean Staker, musician in residence, as we offer a lady. <laughs> As we look ahead to a day where we all contribute to the building of a better world as Elenu reminds us it is on us all.
We sadly call to mind all of the lives lost in the current conflict in Israel and Gaza. It is especially painful to think of the children who have lost their lives to this chapter in the ongoing strife between Israelis and Palestinians. We pray for all those who are mourning and those who are living in ongoing fear in Israel, in Gaza, and throughout the world, hoping that our prayers for peace may soon be heard and answered. I'd like to share uh, the words of the late Rabbi Rachel Cowan. She would teach, our tradition can speak with wisdom to the condition of brokenness. It can illuminate our path when we are in the depths and are calling out for help. It teaches that the metaphor for shleimut, wholeness, is a cracked vessel. When we are struggling to make our way, a Jewish approach to healing studies us with texts, with community, with uplifting or poignant music, and with silence, and with remembering. Let us take this time now to remember those whom we've lost. Yai dai 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 dai. Yai dai 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 dai. Dai 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 dai. It gadal beit kadash shemer rava, bial ma divra chirute bial mich malkute, bechay hon u bia mechon, bechay de holbet Israel, bagalau isman tarib beimro, amen. Ye esh me rava me brach lo lamul meol maya, it barach, vishtabach, be paar, bit roman, bit nase. It adar vitalev italal shme de kudesha brichu, le laming polbir chata vishirata. תוש וחטא ונחמתה עד עמירם בעלמה ואמרו אמן. יהי שמי רבה מן שמיה, וחיים טובים עלינו ועל כל ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו, ויעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל ועל כל יושבי תבל ואמרו אמן. Before we end, I want to remember what we what was said in that beautiful drash about the miracle of being connected to each other through being online together, whether it's Zoom or StreamYard or where we are. Uh, it, it is miraculous that we are together across so many miles. Uh, and, and as it is Shabbat, as Shabbat is coming, uh, for me right now, Shabbat is still a couple of hours from arriving, but I can feel it coming because I'm bringing it in with you and each of us is at a different place on the planet. So I just, as we, as we come to a close of our service, I want to invite you to look out of your window, uh, to notice what time it is where you are, and to feel our connection as Shabbat comes to each of us in our place on the earth. And I know now that for some of you, it has already arrived. And for some of us, it is coming soon. We will close with Adon Olam, led by the Amsterdam Synagogue Choir. Thank you, everyone, and Shabbat Shalom.